Hello everyone and welcome to the first video for 2014 from Sysadmin Tutorials. Today's video we're going to be looking at vCenter Operations Manager and we're going to be running through the installation via the vSphere web client and deploying the OVA. So what I've done here is I've logged into my vSphere web client and the first thing that I want to do is actually create an IP pool. So to do that I need to go to my data center object I go to data centers, click VM Lab Primary, and if I click on Manage, uh, it's actually renamed as Network Protocol Profiles. So in here, I want to click the plus button, and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to name it as my subnet, and I'm going to associate this to a network. So the network that I'm using is called VM Network. So with that selected, I'll click Next. Here I'll type in my subnet, 192.168.1.0 and my gateway, 192.168.1.1. I'm going to skip the DHCP server because we'll be statically assigning the IP addresses for our VC Ops servers. So the servers consist of a user interface server and also an analytics server. So in here, I'm just going to go to DNS server addresses. So my DNS server address is 192.168.1.101. And because I'm going to be manually assigning the IP address, I don't need to tick this enable the IP pool. And I'll click next. We're not going to be using IPv6, so I'm going to skip this and click next. And our DNS domain here is vmlab.local. In the DNS search path, we can also type in vmlab.local and we don't need to enter anything into HTTP proxy as I'm not using one here in the lab. So I'm going to click next and we are ready to complete so just check your settings here in the summary and we'll click finish. So my IP pool or network protocol profile is created and now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to go to our vCenter server. So we're just about to deploy the OVF template here by right clicking on vCenter object and going deploy OVF. So just before I click on this you need to make sure that you've got your client integration plugin installed. So where can you install this? This is on the very first screen of the vSphere web interface before you even log in. So you have your username and password and the link appears just underneath that it says download client integration plugin. So click on that, next, 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 finish, um, complete the installation uh, if you haven't already done so. Uh, then come back to this point and continue on with the video. If you've already deployed it, then we're going to uh, keep going with this. So I'm going to click on deploy OVF template. So I can select local file and browse to my OVA file. So this is my OVA file. I'm using uh, VC Ops at 5.8. I'll click open and we'll click next. It's going to validate the image. It'll display some information about the image. You can see down here in the description that it consists of two VMs. Uh, like I said previously, it's the user interface and also the analytics VM. So we'll click next here. I'll accept the license agreement. Click next. So what VC Ops does is it creates a V app inside your infrastructure and then with inside the vApp you've got your two virtual machines. So the name I'm going to give to my vApp, I'm just going to leave it as default, VMware vCenter Operations Manager, but feel free to change this to whatever you like. And we'll be installing that in the VM Lab primary data center. So obviously if you have more than one data center, you'll see them here. As I've only got the one set up, I'm going to click on VM Lab primary and select next. Now I've got a small configuration set here as default and it explains down the bottom what a small configuration is best suited for. So as you can see, suited for less than 1500 VMs and it just goes through some requirements for CPU and memory for the vApp. You can change that from small, medium and large depending on your environment. So we'll click next. I'm going to be installing this onto a single host, it's called VMESXI1. So I've got that selected and I'll click next. Now you have some options 
for the disk format, you can have thick provision lazy zeroed, thick provision eager zeroed, or thin provisioned. I'm going to select on uh, thin provisioned, and my data store will be vSphere data store. I've got 98 gig available there. It's uh, VMFS, iSCSI at the moment in the lab. Uh, click next. And for our network, we are going to be using or allocating it to VM network, which is where we assign our IP pool to. And the IP allocation is going to be manual. So when I select manual, you can see that this pre populates the DNS server, Netmask, and Gateway below coming from the IP pool. So I'm going to click next. I'll expand this network properties. And first up, we'll just configure the time zone. So as we are in Sydney, Australia here, I will be selecting that option. And we have two IP addresses that we need to set here, one for the user interface VM and one for the analytics VM. So for the user interface VM, we'll be allocating 192.168.1.120. And for the analytics VM, 192.168.1.121. And next. So again, we've come to the completion of the wizard. So we've displayed with a summary of all of our settings. Uh, you can click back if you want to go back and change anything. Otherwise, if we click finish, the vApp will begin to deploy. And while it's deploying, we can check its status on the right hand side here and recent tasks. Okay, so our VC Ops is 100% deployed now. So what we can do is we can go into our vCenter server and go into vApps. If we double click on the vApp VMware vCenter operations, we can see in here we've got two virtual machines. If I click on virtual machines, you can see analytics VM and UI VM. So what we'll do is on the vApp, we're going to right click and select power on and this is going to power on the two VMs and once again you'll see the task in the right hand side here pop up so in the vapp order we've got the analytics VM starting up first as this is the one that holds the database and then followed by the user interface VM starting up okay guys so now that we've got our two virtual machines up and running the next thing that we need to do, we need to finish the configuration via the web interface. So if I open up another tab here and I browse to my UI web interface, which was 192.168.1.120, the default user is admin and the password is admin. So here we're going to be associating our VC Ops virtual appliance to our vCenter server. So in the first box, I'll be putting in my IP address for the vCenter server. In the next field, we'll enter in a username followed by a password with admin credentials to the vCenter server. So the reason this is needed is to be able to register the VC Ops servers into vCenter. So what I usually do is I create a vCenter service account and I use that for all these types of credentials. Um, sometimes I also even create a service account per application. So I would have one for vCenter operations, would have one for vCenter site recovery manager and so on. So I'm just going to use my generic vCenter services account in my lab here and enter in the password. I'll click next. It'll present me with the certificate from vCenter. As it's a self-signed certificate, I see this security alert. So I'll just select yes. Okay, in our next screen, we'll be changing the password for the admin and root account. So the admin account current password is admin. I'll enter in my new password and confirm it. For the root account, the default password is VMware. I'll enter in my new password. And click next. Here we'll enter our vCenter server display name. So I'm just going to type in the host name, vmvc1, the fully qualified domain name or IP address.
the user to register. I'm going to use vCenter service at the password. For the collector user, you can actually specify a user that doesn't have admin rights here as it just needs to collect the data from vCenter. If you leave it blank, it's going to be just using the vCenter service account. I'll click next. We don't have any plugins here, so we can just click next. And we don't have any vCenter service in linked mode either. So we'll click finish. I'll install this certificate. This is coming from the user interface server. I'll click ignore. Okay, so once vCenter operations has been registered to vCenter, the following web page will pop up which is basically your user interface IP slash admin. And here we can see some registration details. And this is quite new, this vCenter server metrics profile. I believe it was introduced in 5.7. I've got two options. So the full profile will grab as much statistics as it can from vCenter server. And the balanced profile will just retrieve the most vital metrics. So you would use this option in a very large scale deployment of vCenter whereby using the full profile might introduce some performance problems in which case you would then drop down to the balanced profile but if you don't have a very large vCenter deployment you can select full profile and click apply now in the next box here we've got the, our vCenter server registration information our address connection status our username that we're using to connect and we've got a few options here where we can update the settings we can unregister it or find a link to VC we can also create a new registration. So if you want this vCenter operations to be able to handle multiple vCenter servers and report back into it with its metrics, you can select new registration and add in additional vCenter servers. Now vCenter Log Insight, this is also quite new, is basically an automated log management which collects and analyzes all types of machine generated log data. So we may do a separate tutorial on implementing that and connecting that in, uh, but that would be at another time. So if we click on the SMTP tab, so in these settings you can set up your SMTP server with uh, authentication if it requires it for outgoing and also SNMP server settings. So I don't have an exchange server or any kind of mail server here so I'm going to skip this one but uh, basically you tick this box and fill in your server address and so on and so on. So this is used for alerting when alerts get sent from vCenter operations to a recipient. So SSL key at the moment it's a self-signed SSL key so you can install your own one here by browsing to the file and clicking install. Status. In the status we have the option to stop and start or restart services and down here under status we can see that the services are actually running at the moment. We can see some version information, IP address information and so on, license information, registration, etc. You can also click on download to download the diagnostics information to send to VMware in the case of opening up a support ticket. The update tab, if there's an update provided, so for example if 5.9 comes out or version 6, uh, we would be updating our vCenter operations manager from this tab. So we'll click on browse, we'll point to the update file and click on update. In account tab, we can change the current admin password and we can change the root account. So I'm going to log out of the admin section and I'm just going to log into the main vCenter operations page. Okay, so here we are at the main page. So I'm going to type in my admin username and password. And now we have our vCenter operations manager loaded. So if I expand the left hand side here, you can see my vCenter server, my data center, and my host and cluster here. So if I click on my host, I can see some information about that. So I'm not going to go too much into the um, full on configuration here, but we've got this up and running. It's going to start reporting for you on uh, all objects inside your vSphere environment. There's one other page that I want to show you just before we wrap up this video is if you have a licensed copy of VC Ops in advanced or enterprise, you'll get access to the VC Ops dash custom interface. So to browse to the VC Ops dash custom interface, it's basically the IP address of your UI server uh, followed by slash VC Ops dash custom. 
And in here we just put in our username and password again. And as you can see here we've got a custom interface showing us by default the top 25 VMs by CPU ready, the swap rate, uh, swap out rate, disk commands per second, latency for read and write. Uh, and we can click through the tabs here and look at different variables such as VM utilization, host utilization, cluster, data store, uh, etc. and heap maps. There's also a tab there for alerts. So within this VCOps custom interface, you can actually in create your own tabs here by clicking on the plus mark. And you can also set up reports and alerts, etc. So I'm going to wrap up this VCOps video for today. I hope you enjoyed it and we're going to see you in our next video.